guys, welcome to 3ds Max news for the month of July. Let's start with the news in updates. We have Corona 13 coming with Toon Shading for a cartoon style renders. Toon and Outline materials are separate for more control and flexibility and you can apply it to the entire scene or only to selected objects. Corona comes with Vantage Lifelink to render even faster scenes using Chaos Vantage. You can export from your Corona scenes directly from 3ds Max to Chaos Vantage. We can see how K-Frame, Skeletons, Close Simulations, Particle Flow and Tie Flow Simulations are supported. Interestingly, it receives an AI enhancer to improve the look of people and vegetation without touching anything else on your render. It's exactly focusing in to improve the quality of the faces and the cloth of people. We get as well Firefly removal, that is a one-click solution to remove unwanted fireflies that normally comes when your pixels are too bright. Not sure if it shares the same technology as we saw with V-Ray, V-Ray introduced that the past version, but at least there it was really good. There's also improvements on the scatter system, now with the scatter clusters that you can control based on a noise calculation or a color map mode where you will choose whatever you are scattering depending on the color of your map and a layer paint mode for a more control, basically you paint whatever you want, one type of um, asset or another. We get the introduction of a thin film layer to get the iridescent materials like the soap bubbles and initial support for Cosmos Asset Variation. Again, we saw the Cosmos as Asset Variation on V-Ray on the past version. Basically, you can import from the Cosmos Gallery a V-Ray proxy and you can change directly in 3ds Max on the modifier different variations of the same asset. And finally, we have better interoperability with Enscape VR scenes. Stefan Hanley created a tool to accelerate the creation of a splat images. Normally, you need to use a splat generator tool like PostShot and it estimates the camera's position, but if the original file or render is a 3D is a 3D object, so you did the render in your 3D scene, we already know the camera's position because they are you create the render from somewhere in the 3D space. If we give to the tool these exact camera positions from where they are generated, we are increasing significantly the quality of the Gaussian splat that is generated by the tool. As we can see on this splat generated with this tool, we can see the, a lot of detail. There is not that many noise that sometimes it's created because the tool needs to define where the camera should be uh, placed on. This script will automatically generate a camera animation on a geosphere around the object in the scene export a CSV file with all the camera transforms and export an initial PLI file for the initial point cloud that is using Typeflow under the hood. Very interesting to start to see people using a Splash as an alternative way of exporting a mesh image Science can offer great possibilities. We will see later on on 3ds Max is only for RGB, an example uh, on a real project with Gaussian splats. So far you can download this script for free and give suggestions for improvements to Stefan. Meows created a very useful tool called Pin My Files. It's simple but it's very useful. Do you know that we have the recent files in 3ds Max where you can choose the latest 10 files that you open in Max? that it's quite useful, but with this tool you can pin the ones that you want to keep reusing so they never disappear from this list, you can reorder them and if a file for example is deleted or you move it from the original folder you will see it because it will turn red you can order the files by name or last accessed date and there are different options to open the file, merge it, xref the file and one that I found awesome for how simple but useful it is, is to do any of these options but without any extra dialogue that will save a lot of time. This tool costs $5. FumeFX is sharing a sneak peek of what they are working on and is a new Noteworks Ocean toolset with some cool initial ocean wave that they are showcasing it, generated with it and different foam patterns. Very interesting to get new options for ocean generation inside 3ds Max. Affair is also sharing what they are working on the new version of Ornatrix version 9 beta with different videos. 
we have a new merge blending modifier to blend between different hair distributions, a new warp roots modifier, a paint brush textures to add color on the hair based on the textures, and a curve sinks for better control over the hair distribution. This looks quite interesting. The Helio plugin allows you to render max scenes on the cloud and has been updated with a lot of suggestions from customers. The tool collects all the assets automatically, sends everything straight to the cloud, runs directly inside 3 ds Max with no setup or learning curve. We have a new tool called Pristidia.ai. It's an AI enhancer for renders and has a plugin inside 3 ds Max to send scenes directly to Pristina AI. One thing that I find very cool is the integration with Max. Instead of adding a generic prompt for the full image, you can select any object in the 3ds Max scene and give a prompt specifically to this 3D object. And the AI improvement will be only affecting this specific object without altering anything else on the scene. It basically creates all the masks that normally you will need to generate before sending it to Comfy UI or similar to isolate where the AI enhancement is happening, but it's doing it automatically. It allows really fine control about what to enhance with AI and what not. Tyflow received a new update with a new concave planner mesh packing. It's a packing algorithm similar to what you find in the UV and Grab modifier, but working for 3D objects. Different users started showing some creative unpacking in Tyflow group in Facebook. And also in my Patreon, I also cover this new operator in detail with some examples, as well all the new improvements on this new Typeflow version. Also a tutorial where we will destroy a metallic rooftop with the deformations, and by a Patreon request, the caramel or liquid that you can find inside a chocolate bar, you can see typical this effect in a lot of commercials. We are doing this with Phoenix in 3ds Max. 3ds Max is only for RGB. We have Andor Season 2, it's already out, and a scanline VFX powered by Netflix has a demo reel with some of the augmented shots, environments, and effects that they did for these series. I was still there when they was working on this, and I was so amazed by the fact that this specific shot with the stormtroopers running through the field of wheat, all what we see that it looks like a massive amount of wheat falling, you will normally think it's 3D, but this was totally, it's a plate. This was filmed with some guys running in front, uh, throwing tons and tons of wheat to this guy. And uh, yeah, it's pretty cool to see that sometimes things that you will think are 3D are actually not 3D. And very good shots there. And I know that 3 d Max has been used for a scene assembly and rendering for this project. The Barty Studio created four different environments for this Airbus product reveal, doing a desert, a forest, marble, and a colorful environment. Simulations all done in Typeflow, and everything has been rendered with V-Ray GPU. They have on the website different screen captures from the 3ds Max viewport. And we have Alireza again, this time he says that he feels unmotivated to keep working on this, so he's sharing it on YouTube on this work in progress state, that looks already very good. We have this crazy character over a Gryphon coming from inside some clouds, and the shore looks amazing. As always from Alireza, V-Ray, Typeflow for the simulations, and I think to remember Ornatrix for the hair. I wish that we could see more of that Alireza. Armando Savoya shared his work for Love, Death and Robots 4, joining the art department and helping to create a dramatic visual style for the space station.
Sylvan Kim shared on LinkedIn different animations he did for the climate game Claire Obscure Expedition 33. All animations done in 3ds Max and they look all amazing. Massimo Verona shared two very cool environments projects using 3ds Max, V-Ray, Forest Pack, Quixel and Da Vinci for post-production. And we have exciting news from J.J. Duran, he works on the title sequence for HBO The White Lotus Season 3 and Netflix The Camiron. And they are both nominated for an Emmy. Very cool simulations on both projects where Duran used Typhlo for all the simulations. We can see that he shares a breakdown with the creative process of the Cameron realization where we can see that he's using Typhlo with the crowd system that is used for all these rats. We can see all the concept art, all of the preparation that comes to do one of these projects, but a lot of tie flow setups that we can see here in action. Really cool stuff. Another thing that we can see J.J. Duran on LinkedIn is his exploration that he's using for AI together with 3ds Max. He's exploring extraction of biped animations from videos using AI, a use of simple animations in 3ds Max to guide more precisely AI, AI animations, that looks amazing, and using one models to drive AI with 3D simulations like this 3D smoke that, yeah, super difficult to do this with traditional uh, 3D techniques with AI it opens the door to a lot of things and it's very interesting to see these types of explorations where we see more traditional 3D combined with AI for creative purposes. We have also my friend Goran Pavles nominated for an Emmy for his opening sequence for the Penguin series. A lot of Houdini simulations there, uh, all the water obviously is uh, Houdini. But the bridge destruction has been simulated in 3ds Max using thinking particles to be later exported to Houdini. And the metal sign on the bridge that you can see here deforming and breaking that I helped doing it, simulating it on Typhlo. And you have a breakdown of the process to create specifically this scene on my Patreon. He will be hosting a talk in SIGGRAPH 2025 that is happening next month on August showcasing a complete breaking off of this sequence. Make Studios had a very interesting post on LinkedIn about the challenges that they faced for a crunchy roll spot. They had to showcase highly detailed mini characters and finally they decided to use Gaussian splats for the first time in the studio to be able to do all these crazy camera motions that they will do later in the 3D space. They say that the traditional method of just keeping the action figure and light static and move the camera to recreate the splat will not work because they needed a much more dynamic lighting. So instead, they didn't move the cameras or the lights. What they did is rotate the figure on a turntable, triggering the software into thinking that the camera was the thing that was moving, and it worked really good. They enhanced the Gaussians with very cool simulations in Typhlo, obviously, rendered in V-Ray. Super cool use of Gaussian splats on a project. It's cool to see these new technologies slowly getting into mainstream workflows. William Fiorentini is a usual here on this section, a generalist at ILM with another awesome personal project based on the original Naboo concept art, with V-Ray, Forest Pack and Nuke. And we have Capsule Studios a long-term company using 3ds Max as the backbone of his softwares and uh, yeah, they presented a new show reel for 2025 with a lot of awesome looking animations, environments, characters, effects, some of them they really look epic.
Max Cooley created a lot of explode views for mechanical elements and you can see it on his website, all types of models from a very small typical models to huge and complex mechanical buildings with larger scales and we can see how he creates this detailed disassembly animations with a wind turbine inside 3ds Max. Paul Neal is working in a T-Rex, doing the modeling, texturing, rigging and animation. So far looking amazing, let's see what he will do with this. And next month is August and we have Seagraph 2025 at Vancouver. Autodesk will do different talks and presentations Tuesday and Wednesday with his typical Autodesk Vision series that happens on every Seagraph event. We have a very cool one on Tuesday, I will try to attend to this one, where Michael Ralla and Nick Marshall, both BFX supervisors at ILM, will share how they designed this train station for the movie Sinners, where they had to integrate these 3D environments with a 65mm film footage looking really really good and will be very interesting to see their workflows at Industry of Light and Magic, how they integrate 3ds Max on these complex workflows. And I will also be at Seacraft Tuesday 12th and Thursday 14th. I will be for a couple of hours each day at Autodesk booth, I need to work too. So I will be showcasing how we use 3ds Max and Tyflow at Distillery BFX to accelerate our workflow and deliver high quality projects with tight deadlines thanks to some of the new features in 3ds Max. So if you are around Seagraph, pass by, say hi, it will be fun to see you all there, guys. And that's all for this month. I hope that you like it. The typical and usual when we finish the video, like it, share it with your friends, subscribe if you are not subscribed. And thanks a lot, a lot to all my Patreons. We are having a lot of fun doing new projects every month with exclusive tutorials. And it helps making keep doing these videos for you guys. Thank you and see you soon. Bye.